So, are you ready for this? My insanely radical point of view on intellectual property and patenting of ideas and so forth. I have people pretty frequently uh, message me on YouTube saying, you should uh, patent your ideas, you should, uh, you should uh, get these protected as intellectual property so that uh, people won't steal your work. I'm assuming we're all pretty familiar with the reasoning behind copyright and intellectual property. The idea is basically that the originator or inventor of the uh, idea can uh, take that idea and monetize it and receive you know the uh, profits from their labor and in a lot of cases intellectual property doesn't just involve one person but it involves entire industries of uh, research development you know testing just so much goes into it that uh, the only way for it to be viable is if that intellectual property is protected and the uh, people who create the uh, product can profit from it. That's the theory anyway. Additionally, uh, this is supposed to act as an incentive for inventors and people who come up with these uh, ideas to continue to have good ideas. Because clearly if uh, in, in a capitalistic society, uh, if you're not receiving uh, financial compensation for your hard work, uh, the system is failing and really what's the point of uh, having good ideas or doing anything if you're not making money, am I right? So that's, that's basically where I disagree with uh, the idea of copyright, uh, patenting, and intellectual property is this uh, uh, assumption that capitalism is sort of the ultimate force of nature, uh, that it's uh, a direct product of evolution, and that we should all just uh, attempt to um, obey and respect these natural laws. You know, if I, if I was writing this down, that natural would be in quotes, because I don't really think that uh, capitalism as it exists today or intellectual property laws really is in any way respecting the natural order of the universe. No, uh, my point of view is pretty much the exact opposite of that. And uh, I don't really believe that people need a financial incentive in order to have good ideas and uh, I think that, that that's kind of a, a sort of ridiculous concept that is basically um, perpetuated by a, a capitalistic financial system. When you take a look around today at our culture and our tools, um, our technology, pretty much everything that makes up our society. Um, since the Industrial Revolution, all of the great ideas have more or less entered the public domain. And the result of this is that as a whole, as a net um, society, civilization, culture, ha we've all equally on some level, although the proportion has been quite small in many cases we've experienced a, a dramatic increase in our quality of life uh, in aggregate. In a sense uh, intellectual property and copyright is a kind of exchange mechanism where basically uh, the creator or originator of the idea is rewarded uh, in a disproportionate amount compared to the producers and 
as a side effect of this, the consumers who are basically consuming this technology or idea, um, they also receive a sort of ancillary benefit. So that is essentially the current model. Now, it's not a perfect system. I mean, there are really no perfect systems in nature or in in human society. But um, just for the purpose of sort of a thought exercise, how could we imagine that this system could be altered or improved in such a way that the benefit was actually um, more evenly and fairly distributed? Imagine for a moment that uh, immediately great ideas entered the public domain and instead of instead of the original creator of the idea receiving the lion's share of the benefits that basically uh, civilization and culture and society as as a whole um, was able to instantly take those ideas and utilize them freely without any um, limitations now the downside of that of course is that the creator uh, may not be able to justify financially uh, or rationalize the, their own generosity basically creating this uh, idea and per perhaps it takes them years or it takes a lot of intensive research what have you and uh, basically then they are not able to uh, reap all the benefits of of that hard work on the other hand there's sort of this uh, ambient benefit to them where basically their idea becomes part of the global intellectual ecosystem I, I really I just sort of despise the the use of the term ecosystem regarding technology because I think it's kind of a sort of hijacking uh, the elegance of nature for our crude uh, human attempts at biomimicry but um, it's really the only way to express sort of the entirety of the the system of of exchange for ideas and uh, production and consumption that we have in the world so I'm just going to use it out of necessity so basically the global uh, intellectual ecosystem is improved and theoretically over time uh, those I ideas spread you know throughout society diffusing and not only the inventor but uh, everyone in the world uh, who is capable of you know procuring the uh, product is able to benefit almost immediately or at least as rapidly as possible uh, from the, uh, the the idea that was so generously <laughs> donated by the uh, inventor my point of view is that this sort of a model um, is more analogous to natural systems because uh, if you if you take a look at nature any kind of real ecosystem um, there's a lot of exchange going on there but there isn't this kind of intentional uh, hoarding or uh, channeling of of benefits you know from one original you know a uh, source in a community that is then um, controlled in such a way that it's not immediately available to all the members of the community that's kind of a backwards and uh, you know a, a system that intentionally slows its own evolution let's say like if you <clears throat> if you look at uh, communities of uh, mammals or 
you know, uh, insects, uh, bacteria, microorganisms, they all pretty much, uh, even viruses, they all share the same characteristic of um, successful ideas or, I mean, I'm saying ideas, but really what I mean is like uh, genes or uh, genetic, uh, sort of actually really if you want to be technical, quantum, you know, energy that um, has a configuration and a, a characteristic properties that allow it to function uh, in a way that is superior to a previous version of the, or uh, iteration of the same basic uh, signature. <clears throat> I, I think of this in terms of genotypes. There are certain genotypes that, I mean, I really hate, once again, I'm getting into sort of the metaphysics of the of genetics and but really what it comes down to is survival and uh, I hate to think of things in such a black and white way but that's really what it comes down to that certain genotypes allow for uh, survival and repetition to be more efficient and uh, to resist entropy now, naturally, it's a mistake to think that uh, any one of these successful ideas is really only there for its own sake to continue to endure indefinitely. That's not the case at all. No. Those ideas are just stepping stones and nothing more to the next generation. In fact, they are really just a transmissive medium for intelligence. And they really... Uh, their their entire value is defined only by the fact that they are able to survive long enough to produce another generation that is in fact superior to them and that is the most sort of crystallized and you know the sharpest possible edge of understanding uh, the bare bones nature of genotypes and evolution. I mean, if it's, it's basically stripping out all sort of um, implied or anthropomorphism, any kind of uh, human-centric idea of the reason for, for ideas to exist in the first place. So as crazy as all that sounds, that is basically the core of my personal uh, position on copyright intellectual property and um, ownership of ideas I think that that the way our society is structured that we're really kind of going about things the wrong way and in my opinion is that the only way to really rectify that problem is to to understand it in terms of genetics and evolution and that basically the purpose of ideas is not to enrich the originator of the idea but it's to enrich the ecosystem and I think that is is the true interpretation of intellectual property and and so in my own way of biomimicry I'm attempting to to mirror that interpretation by releasing my own ideas freely and uh, making them accessible on the internet to improve the entire community, not just my own individual state. But that's just half the story, because as we all know, we have no choice but to live in the world as it is, you know, the status quo is the thing that is ultimately ruling our lives right now and defining how we interact with the uh, culture and the ecosystem. So uh, I have a another layer of strategy that goes on top of that. And see, the these are some of my favorite tools right here. This is my workbench. And it's my belief that a designer, an engineer, you know, an inventor, a machinist, they're really only as good as their tools and 
this actually relates to what I was saying earlier because because the only way to truly transform the status quo is to outwit it and that means using it as a tool to the ends of its own destruction in a sense so when I release my ideas into the public domain my intention is basically for them to be stolen more specifically I want them to be stolen by the most brilliant minds in the world I want them to be stolen by multinational corporations I want these entities to take my ideas and as quickly as possible put them into mass production and to start profiting from those ideas that I created because this is the only way for the genotype to spread as quickly as possible and to become the next stepping stone or rung in the ladder towards human enlightenment towards our ascension personally I don't have the resources the energy or the time to develop my ideas beyond what you see in my videos you know they're basically proof of concept that is sort of my mission when I release these designs onto YouTube specifically I just am trying to communicate the idea in the most efficient way possible because as I said I just don't have the resources the energy or the time to jump through all these ridiculous uh, legal contrivance hoops and ego obsessions that uh, plague uh, the normal circuits of supply and demand in our intellectual ecosystem. I'm fairly confident that it's only a matter of time, maybe not in my lifetime, but I think it's it's inevitable that eventually inventors and designers and people who create and produce throughout the entire spectrum are going to come to the a similar conclusion that we need to work with nature not against nature and uh, systems like like capitalism which are inherently flawed and delusional and egocentric are going to fall away and be replaced by superior systems that actually reward our entire civilization for for good ideas and make all of our lives better as opposed to just centralizing and controlling uh, these genotypes that allow us all to live better so <clears throat> I feel like like contributing to this change is uh, something important that I need to do in my own life and really I think the ultimate expression of you know all of this this uh, perversion of the idea of intellectual property is being able to do whatever you want with your ideas and that means to me to take my ideas and to give them freely to everyone because ultimately that's going to come back to me in some form not necessarily as you know a big fat check or royalties or whatever but basically make my life better in some way as long as the idea is inherently sound as long as the configuration of the genotype actually has some quantum merit you know I've pretty much given up trying to convince other people to operate in a similar way and that's fine because you know everyone should be able to live how they see fit that is uh, biodiversity and that is a strategy that is much more intelligent um, and cost effective over time than any sort of dictatorial or you know philosophical strong arming so I say do whatever you want me I'm going to continue to try to live according to this uh, philosophy that I have of releasing my ideas into the public domain that's how I want to express my 
intellectual property. And um, as for people who want to hoard their intelligence and profit from that, you know, more power to you. Just don't tell me what to do with my ideas. And I appreciate the feedback. Obviously, people are just trying to, to help me, you know, do the intelligent thing in uh, the current environment. And I understand that, but um, my viewpoint of what the intelligent thing is is a little bit different. Yeah, and so that was basically the sane part of the video. <laughs> so, I bet you can't even imagine what's going to come next, right? So, all that being said, when it comes to the actual nature of ideas and uh, where do they come from, you know? There's, there's like a whole other universe of research and and philosophy embedded right in that question. Um, from my point of view, ideas are not something that are are necessarily created by us. Um, it's kind of a very abstract and subjective uh, thing to say, but I think I think. Uh, the great philosophers of, you know, the ancient world were onto something when they uh, speculated about a higher reality, one that is uh, more highly ordered than our reality, and and I'm I'm sure that that probably just goes on indefinitely up into a, sort of a infinite loop of higher realities. <clears throat> And energy from one reality probably uh, penetrates or diffuses or is interpreted, uh, transliterated down uh, through some kind of membrane or God knows what. Maybe it's just a seamless transition like a visual spectrum. And uh, that energy manifests in the lower reality as maybe... Uh, a diffused, uh, out-of-focus version of the higher-ordered reality, and naturally uh, that has to come through some sort of conduit, and uh, uh, I think that it's, it's plausible that the human brain is kind of like a lens that focuses, focuses that uh, energy from higher realities and allows it to manifest in our world in a slightly uh, less refined yet still potent form. So <clears throat> from that point of view I think I think when people claim ownership of ideas that they thought something up and they created it, I think that's that's kind of arbitrary and maybe arrogant and I think that there's definitely some legitimacy to, at least within context, of people claiming ownership of ideas, you know, all things being equal, but uh, probably in, in actuality, like if you really want to get philosophical about it, I think that ideas probably are just borrowed, and just like these tools on this desk here, they are are nothing more than than devices that allow us to construct even more complicated or advanced ideas at which point like it's easy to lose sight of the original sort of inspiration and I think it's crucial to note that without these tools it would be impossible to create the next generation of of ideas Say I claim that I invented this screwdriver right here, and in order for you to use this screwdriver, you're going to need to have to pay me a fee for each screw that you screw into a board or what have you. That's kind of absurd, don't you think? And uh, basically it just it makes the whole world poorer, and uh, I can't imagine anyone really wanting to be a part of that, but clearly it's a uh, 
it's the way to to do things in in this current uh, phase of uh, of the world. But uh, my opinion is that we should resist that kind of thinking. That uh, if somebody wants to screw in a screw, I should just be able to hand them this screwdriver and say, "Here you go. Go ahead and." screw in as many screws as you want, you don't owe me anything. Now, that's not just generous, I think it's intelligent. And and I really wish that more people sort of had that mindset because I think it would make all of our lives better. And, and ultimately, at the end of the day, what really are we losing by allowing people to have that kind of freedom? I think, I think we're losing nothing. And I think we're gaining everything. So that's my opinion on intellectual property and copyright and ownership and all that. And obviously, I would really hope that no one would misunderstand this and think that I'm applying this philosophy across the board. And like, <laughs> obviously, things like owning property or, and I mean, I mean, like land or whatever, it's a completely different domain and perhaps these rules don't really apply in the same way or the same degree and obviously there's a lot of gray areas and so forth and I think all that needs to be solved uh, through understanding and cooperation etc so um, yeah that's basically all I had to say and it's a lot of it's uh, really speculative and crazy but <clears throat> that's how I'm choosing to apply my philosophy to this topic. So I hope everybody's cool with that. Thanks for watching.